Hi everyone. Some ideas have a certain appeal to people, and the most intriguing of them is, of course, immortality. The notion of cheating death and staying young forever has always seemed very tempting to people, no matter who they were. Prominent scholars, monks, or simply just rich guys. We have to admit the idea of eternal life doesn't seem that plausible. But they say that some chosen ones have managed to get one step closer to the desired immortality. That's what we're going to talk about today. So who are these people who try to cheat death? Let's find out. Diane de Poitiers the mistress of the French king Henry II, Diane de Poitiers, was considered really beautiful. She first met the future king when she was only seven years old. Diane was 26 at that time, a respectable age for the 16th century. Nevertheless, young Henry was fascinated by Diane and proclaimed her his beloved. Yes, despite the difference in age, the future king fell in love with the unfading beauty of de Poitiers, and when he was proclaimed king, he made Diana his chief mistress. He married Catherine de' Medici, but always listened to Diane, consulted with her on all questions, and she controlled literally everything that happened at court and beyond. Some historians believe that she's the only mistress who managed to achieve such a level of influence on the king and made everyone around her respect her power. Surprisingly, but even at 50, Diane de Poitiers was still beautiful. She was immortalized in several paintings and sculptures, and even if we assume that the artists embellished Diane's features, it still becomes clear the stories about her beauty are quite true. But how did the king's mistress manage to stay young for so long? Of course, during her life there were many rumors about it, but the real secret was revealed only several centuries after Diane's death. When French scientists dug up the remains of Diane de Poitiers in 2009, they discovered a high level of gold in her hair. And this is not just a figure of speech, meaning that Diane's hair had a golden color. Since she wasn't a queen and didn't wear a crown, scientists said that jewelry couldn't contaminate her hair or body. Therefore, experts believe that Diane used the so-called drinking gold, a special elixir based on the precious metal. At that time, people believed that it helped maintain youth and cure many diseases. There was something about the alchemy and power of the sun transmitted to the drinker. It is very likely that Diane de Poitiers was killed by her desire to look so young. Traces of mercury, which was also a component of that elixir, were discovered in her bones, and it's unlikely that the drug really helped her maintain her beauty. Most likely, Diane was just very lucky to have exceptionally good genes. Alexander Bogdanov Alexander Alexandrovich Bogdanov was a Russian scientist, revolutionary, writer, thinker. Well, he was a man of many talents. Bogdanov received his medical degree at the end of the 19th century, and from 1926 to 1928, he headed the Institute for Hematology and Blood Transfusions. This, of course, was not the only achievement of the scientist, but for now, let's talk about blood transfusion. The fact is that Bogdanov sincerely believed, using blood transfusion, you can rejuvenate the body. Here is what he wrote in his book Essays in Tectology, The General Science of Organization. There is every reason to believe that the young blood, together with the materials taken from young tissues, can help an aging body. Bogdanov's theory seemed very tempting to many. The high-level officials supported it, and so the Institute for Hematology and Blood Transfusions was founded. At first, Bogdanov's experiments were quite successful. It was believed that the optimal subjects for transfusion are old and young people, because the young body is able to handle the old blood, and the elderly man's body, on the contrary, should benefit from the young blood. Bogdanov repeatedly experimented on himself, and according to some contemporaries, he really did start to look younger. But this theory became fatal for him. During his 11th blood transfusion, Bogdanov's body rejected the blood, which resulted in the death of the scientist. The student, however, was not harmed. Qin Shi Huang Perhaps you haven't heard of this person, but you've definitely read about his legacy, or maybe even seen it with your own eyes. After all, it was Qin Shi Huang who combined the fragments of the defensive structures, creating the Great Wall of China, and he was buried along with the famous Terracotta Army. Sound familiar? In addition, this emperor created a huge national road system, well, and much more. But Qin Shi Huang was not just a strong and ruthless head of state, he was also a man obsessed with eternal life. The autocratic emperor 
emperor was the target of several assassination attempts, and so he was really afraid of death. Or maybe he just wanted to rule forever. Because of his obsession, the emperor was often deceived. He bought all kinds of so-called youth elixirs. Qin Shi Huang visited Shifu Island three times because he believed that there was a mountain of immortality there. The emperor also sent ships with hundreds of young men and women to search for this mountain. Not one of them returned. Perhaps people understood that they'd be killed if they returned with no result, and decided that it's just better to stay away from Qin Shi Huang. Forcing his best scientists to invent the elixir of immortality, the emperor burned their old books, seeing no use in them, and even executed one of the alchemists for failure. Qin Shi Huang never found the secret of eternal life, and died in 210 BC at the age of 49. Dashi Dojo Itigilov Dashi Dojo Itigilov was born in 1852 and began his religious education at the age of 16. In 1911, he was appointed the 12th Pandido Kambo Lama of Buddhists in eastern Siberia and remained in this position until 1927. Then, according to legend, an incredible thing happened. Itigilov sat in the lotus posture, gathered the disciples and gave them instructions to visit him 75 years later. Then he asked them to read a special prayer of death. But but his disciples didn't dare to utter it in the presence of a living teacher. Itigalov began to read this prayer. Gradually, the disciples joined him. According to Buddhist teachings, being in a state of meditation, Dashi Dojo Itigalov achieved a state of nirvana. Studies of his body conducted after his death showed that the Lama's body had no signs of decomposition. There was no disgusting smell, and the cells didn't seem to be dead either. In addition, the body weight would have changed if the man was really dead. Of course, the scientists came up with several explanations, but since January 2005, any medical and biological studies of Itigalov's body have been suspended by the decision of another Kambo Lama. However, Dashi Dojo is not the only Buddhist who plunged into deep meditation. In 2015, scientists discovered a mummified monk in Mongolia, but Buddhists claim that this is a living monk sitting in a lotus posture. He just meditates, but he remains alive. The monk's identity is unclear, although some believe that he might be a teacher of the Dashi Dojo at Sigilov. Perhaps he was able to convey to his student the secret of meditation and eternal life. Robert Ettinger And finally, let's have a look at the modern, and perhaps the most realistic, way to achieve immortality. It was designed by Robert Ettinger, an American academic who has gained worldwide fame as the father of cryonics. Robert Ettinger was born in 1918 in Atlantic City in a Jewish family of emigrants from Russia. He studied at Wayne State University, where he received two degrees in physics and mathematics. When he was a kid, Ettinger believed that scientists would soon learn the secret of eternal youth, but the older he became, came, the more clearly he realized that this would not happen anytime soon. Then, the scientists came up with a brilliant idea. If people haven't learned yet to live forever, perhaps this knowledge will become available in the future. The only thing left to do is wait for it. And to do this, you need to preserve your body. By 1960, the 42-year-old Ettinger, who'd been actively consulting with biologists and physicians all this time, came up with sufficient scientific justification for his idea. Soon, he outlined it in the book, The prospect of immortality, which got a lot of attention from people. Before the book, people were not particularly interested in cryonics. But the idea of preserving the human body after death has literally blown the minds of Americans. After the publication of the book, Essinger began to popularize the idea of cryogenic freezing, featuring in a large number of talk shows on American television and giving interviews to American newspapers. In 1976, Essinger founded the Cryonics Institute, where he was going to store the bodies of people. The idea was quite simple. First, the body is treated in a special way to protect it from damage, then it's cooled to minus 196 degrees Celsius for a day or two, and then placed in a container filled with liquid nitrogen. Today, the Cryonics Institute stores the bodies of the scientist's mother, his two wives, and Ettinger himself. Robert Ettinger died on July the 23rd, 2011, at the age of 92, and as he requested, his body was frozen. However, despite Ettinger's death, his work lives on. The Cryonics Institute continues to freeze dead people and pets, no matter how weird it sounds. Today, 
day, more than 2,000 people have applied for cryopreservation procedures after death, and 170 have already been frozen in tanks with liquid nitrogen. For now, this is as close as humanity can get to immortality. But who knows, maybe many years later we'll be able to unravel the secrets of eternal life. If you aren't frozen, if you're buried or cremated, then you're done. You're gone. If they think about it enough, they'll say, well, I'll take that chance. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description. You interested? Great.